Three nights ago, before the game of Port Adelaide versus Carlton at Marvel Stadium, I had a dream. It was very small, but I saw Port playing Carlton in this dream, and Carlton were beating Port by 30 points. I thought Port played like they do every week against average teams, and that Carlton won that game in my dream. But that dream was only half of the reality that actually happened last night. It was a Friday night game, closed roof, and Port Adelaide somehow got that win against the second rated team currently on the ladder in the Carlton Blues. Now, I actually thought we were going to lose this game. Carlton had been playing some good footy, not in the last few weeks, but still better footy than we were. And especially after last week's game against Richmond, I thought, mate, we can't play like that against a top four team. So I actually thought Paul were going to lose. But you know what? Leading up to the week, a lot of things happened. Like De Koning's injury. De Koning, or De Koning, sorry, for Carlton, that was a big blow for them for the rest of the home and away season. And I thought, you know what? We got sweet in. Even though our main Ruckman Soto's out, I think we've got a chance. Because although De Koning mainly plays Ruck for Carlton these days, he can move up forward, he can go back. He's a pivotal player for that team. And then, just before the game, Mackay, late middle withdrawal. Now, who didn't see that coming, honestly? He was sick. He was sick. Yeah, he had a big headache. That's why he didn't play. And I thought, wow, if only Colonel or Cripps were out, then I would put a line through Carlton. But, you know, those two injuries helped us. Zach Williams, he dominated us last time we played him at Adelaide Oval. But we didn't have Connor Rosie last time, and we didn't have Rioli last time. So we had those two big inclusions this week. So at the start of the game, who lifted up for Carlton? Charlie Kerno, the MVP, two-time Coleman medalist, currently leading the Coleman medalist. He started strong without Mackay. He was doing well. He was up the ground. He was on the wing. He even went back to defence at some point during the game. Played up forward, kicked some good goals. Now, the umpires helped him, as they usually do. The free kicks, eh, questionable. Some of those out-of-bounds deliberates they paid, they were terrible. But, you know, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. But you know what? I thought, they're there. The free kicks are barely there, but you don't play those free kicks every week. So, Carlton was scoring a free kicks, and they were scoring a foul turnovers. I said, I said to someone I was watching the game with, I said, Port will turn over the ball because their skills aren't that great. Even though we've got a stronger side going into that game, our skills weren't that good because we've got a cardboard box coaching our team. So I thought, you're going to score off our turnovers, which Carlton did. And then what happened? George Yardis on the boundary, 45 metres out. I said, he's not going to kick this. He kicks the goal. Unbelievable. But then... He misses the one directly in front. <sighs> Look, he played well. He's, he's definitely our number one forward this year. Coming back from an ACL as well. George Yard, he's excellent. Really good. But despite that first quarter, that second ha half, we really turned things on. I said to the person I was watching it with, I said, whoever wins the midfield will win the game. It doesn't matter about the forwards or the defence. The mid, you need a winner in the midfield between these two teams. And Port dominated the midfield in that second half. Carlton only scored one goal in that second half of football. One goal. Being a top two team. Because Port annihilated in the middle. We could have actually won by more. We are missing direct shots in front that we should have put through. They put Raddy Galea up forward, which was an okay move. He did okay. You know, he kicked a goal going up forward. But, you know, there was those players, like I say, those B-grade players. Burgoyne. B 
People like love Burgoyne. He's a good player, yes. But when it comes to under pressure, when there's pressure on the game, when things get intense, Burgoyne chokes. He's not an intense player. He's, he can play football. He's got the skills. He's fit. But when it comes down to pressure, he crumbles. Crumbles. Like, running into goal. What does he do? He turns around. Turns around. And he gets tackled. Don't, why are you turning around? You've got the ball. You're 10 metres out. Just kick the goal. Why do you have to look around? If you're looking around, you're giving your position more time to tackle you. That's, that's, that's just simple, simple errors that you can't do. Another B grader. Evans, and I'm not talking about the good Evans. There's a Logan Evans. He's good. I'm talking about the other Evans. The name that shall not be mentioned, his first name. Francis Evans. He, he, he cracks under pressure. He, is not, uh, he cannot play against top teams. There were so many times in that fall line, he just crumbled. He, he, he couldn't dispose of it. He panicked, panicked. He, tried, he, he, he was in two minds of what to do. Francis Evans is not in our starting 22. And the other one, Darcy Byrne-Jones. The two-minute wonder, I call him. The two-minute wonder. He plays good two minutes every game. He kicks two goals. And somehow that two minutes he plays keeps him every week. But you look at the rest of the 180 minutes, he does nothing. Hundred and twenty minutes more like it, but still. Charlie Dixon, we know this is his last year. He's done at the end of the year. George Yard is now our main forward. But what Dixon did was pivotal. Even though he didn't get much touches, he didn't kick any goals, but he kept weedering out of the game. Carlton only have one good defender, and that's Weedering, who's one of the best defenders in the game. And the fact that he tagged Dixon, because Dixon was more of the power forward, it just helped those like Giorgiardis, Radigalia, give them a bit more space, our small forwards. So although Dixon didn't do much, taking Weedering out of the game helped us because Carlton crumbled in their defence without Weedering. Cripps, Ollie Wines. It was a battle of the Brownlow medalists. Both Brownlow medalists recently in the last couple of years. But Ollie Wines. Ollie Wines played a great game. Probably the BOG, Ollie Wines, if you look at his stats and his impact. They went and tagged Butters. They put the tag on Butters. You tag one, the others lift. You can tag Butters all you want. But the fact that Ollie Wines lifted that game helped us win that game. You can't tag them all. You want to tag Butters? Rosie or Jason Horn France will stand up. Jason did well in that last quarter, actually. Good old Jason. That fourth quarter. Jason, he likes to take the game on. And sometimes he either gets a free kick or sometimes gets holding the ball. That's all right. I don't mind that because he's an impactful player. He can play forward. He can play in the midfield. We did well in that area. Our midfield annihilated their midfield. We pulled their pants down. And they've got Cripps and Walsh in that midfield. But what do they do? They're playing Chera back as a half-back flank. Chera's a midfielder. But the last few weeks since his injury, he's had no impact much for that team. So they're playing him at half-back bank to get some cheap possessions. It's, he's wasted back there. He's an inside midfielder. You traded pick six for him. You traded a pick six for him and you're playing him as a half-back flank. You're not going to win games like that. What more can I say? I don't think we're going to win going into it. Injuries helped us. And I don't want to hear about this five-game turnaround. This, we only had five games. Oh, five days, sorry. Five-day turnaround. Sorry, my light just went off in the background. It distracted me. This five-day turnaround. I don't want to hear about this five-day. You had one extra day. You had one extra day. Port played Saturday night. You played Sunday afternoon. Paul had to travel to Marvel. You didn't have to travel. Your AFL standard players, your AFL listed players. You're lucky they don't play Thursday night games at this time of the season. I don't hear free kicks. Go look at the first half of the football and you'll see who got all the free kicks and silly free kicks. 
We won. Our players stood up. Are we a top four team? No, of course not. I can't believe we're currently sitting fourth. We'll drop come the end of the, the round. But we, I'll take the win. You know what it was? You know what that win was? It was redemption. Redemption. Redemption from when we lost to them at Adelaide Oval a couple of months back. That last quarter, Cripps turned things alive and won in the game. Walsh dominated that game. But not those two, not this week. Those two played average, both of them. And it was our midfielders that stood up. What a win. I actually watched a game with a friend of mine who's a Carlton supporter. He's got his own channel and I appeared on his channel post-game. What I'll do is I'll, I'll clip or I'll send the link or post the link in my um, description, and you can go watch um, the video where I appear on that channel. We've got, what, four weeks left? Will Port play top eight? Probably. But what impact will we have for the rest of the, the series in the finals? Who knows? We don't have many injuries. We'll get Solo back in a couple of weeks, which I think we need to play him as a full uh, up forward. We get... Um, Marshall back, which I think should be dropped for Dixon. Oh, sorry, Dixon should be dropped for Marshall. So, we're doing well. I'll take the win. I'll take the win. They are the Navy Blues. They are the dark, dark Navy Blues. They're the team that always lets you down. But you know what? Go the power, and I'll see you all in my next video.